It's the Wickersham Leader Show with today's episode, Requiem for a KO. If only I knew what Requiem meant. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back. It's good to see you all here today, ready and willing to have your face pummeled in by anyone and anything that comes your way. Maybe you'll be the one doing the pummeling. I don't know, some people are hammers, some people are nails, as they say. I'm a nail. <laughs> <laughs> but even a nail can do damage, huh? And you ask anybody who's ever had to receive a tetanus shot about whether or not nails can hurt people, right? Uh, how was your week, huh? Good? Bad? Relaxing? I hope it's relaxing. I... Oh, oh my gosh, Danny, it's been a while, hasn't it? I feel great! I've been doing some work on my own, practicing out uh, a comic. It's a short one page comic. Is there a Namekian named Hammer? There should be. <laughs> Heaven knows that Piccolo would fuse with him, too. Was, oh, yeah. I'm working on this little comic about my time in VR chat. Nothing major. It's just a little one-page goof. I'll probably finish it tonight. Uh, oh, I'm also doing an animatic. I'm working on that. That should be fun when that gets going. And, uh, aside from that, there's also, well, I'm also slowly working towards animating myself. Hey, War, how are you doing? Surprised to see you here today. That's unusual. Well, in any case, I need to get my fingers limber and readied up to go. So, let's hop into training mode for the next 15 or so minutes, huh? So what am I going to practice today? I think I want to practice a little bit of spacing. Because <sighs> as much as I hate having to do spacing and waiting and not just going whole ham the whole time, uh, I have to keep my practice in mind. And I didn't pick Pit. There's no school today, so no need for a bus driver. Oh, that's great to hear. Yeah, I'm young. Like, I mean to use Pit. Because Pit is in the exact middle of everyone in terms of weight. I think that was on purpose. Oh. N U C H today? What's N U C H? If you have any tips, I'd love to hear them. That's not very far. What about the other way? Oh, my... Well, un perhaps unsurprisingly, the bear has more... It's shorthand slang for neutral. Oh. Yeah, I mean... Uh, when I was- I was doing some matches in my server the other day, and I did eventually win, but, um, it was only after I played- after I slowed down a lot, a lot, I slowed down a lot, and I had to, like, play footsies, right? I hate playing footsies, though, because I'm not, like, killing the other person, I'm waiting. For the opportunity to kill them. It's like short hop, short hop, back off, and then do safe aerials all the time. But when you're actually playing a match, it's really hard to keep track of that. That's like 70% of Smash, though. It didn't used to be when I sucked more and everybody else sucked more, too. It wasn't like that. Hope Smash 6 is a more aggressive game. Well, at least we could say that this is more aggressive than Smash 4 was, where everybody's shield was so powerful that you'd see everybody just run up and shield. Of course he came back from that. Whatever, that would have killed almost anyone else. 
I don't have any, like, training regimens. I mean, there are some things that I do want to practice, like, um... Um... Hang on, I'll wait for Pit to get back up. And this is one thing that I... That I wish... Turn that off. One thing that I wish I could actually pull off in a real match. Eat a raw egg. Alright, yeah, good idea! I want to pull that off in a real match at some point. That... That up throw double bear. I mean, the second one is not really gonna work. But the first one, I'm probably gonna be able to do. The annoying thing about the pit bot, though, is that it's really hard to KO him. Because he can recover from dang near everywhere. If only Smash had a better tr training mode. Oh yeah, you're not kidding. Now I can do reverse bears. What I would love, what I'm surprised the bot doesn't do though, is that um, sometimes when I practice this, I want to see, is it like clean? Is it before they can even act at all? Or if they can act, it does it not matter? There's no way to make the AI do an input as soon as possible. There's no way, like, if you tell the AI to jump, it won't try to constantly jump in the air. It will try, it will only jump when it hits the ground. So if I tell it, like, look, 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 look. Jump. It only does a single full hop. He's not jumping. Need that friend there to mash while you're training. Yeah, all too true. Wow, he missed the ledge. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, but I took him with me. <laughs> uh, what's, uh, oh, right. Like, the main thing, obviously, we, you know, everybody knows that the main thing you do with DK is you space out his bears. Throw out those, throw out those short hops. No idea how to follow DIs in a fight. Not like I would really be... Not like I would be good at following them anyway, even if I did know. Yeah. Ugh. Can't even recover from that far. Honestly, when DK gets somebody knocked onto the ground, there's not a whole lot he can do after the fact. I mean, I could try to go for, like, you could get the jab reset, sure. But you can't really turn convert it into, like, a, you can't really convert it into a kill. And you can't grab after you do a, after you do a jab reset. Like, they, they, like, even the AI will automatically get up, watch. Yeah, you can't grab. I mean, I guess you don't want to go for the jab reset, because if they're just knocked on the ground... Oh. If they're just knocked on the ground, then just, just jab them. 
or just grab him rather. I don't know. I've never really known what to do in training mode a lot of the time. Not like a fox or something where you can jab reset into an up smash. Yeah. Yeah, DK can't really do anything, so... Probably my best option if I get somebody knocked down is to, um... Hang on. Is probably to go for something like this. Just gonna have to do the classic tech chase. Assuming they tech, that's true. Because I also don't know where they're going to tech to. Hello, Celeste. Good to see you. She says it's morning no matter what time it is. See? It's morning when she says it is. <sighs> nice to know the cat controls the sun. She just believes she does. She's got a big head about Egyptians. Never mind that the sun god's a bird. Or a dung beetle. to be worship. This used to be a good country! <laughs> well, people also eat birds and bugs. And who runs the world? Girls? Girls just want to have fun when the working day is done. I didn't factor in that part. Close enough. My lawyer has advised me not to finish the joke. Good job. Good, good, good on you. All right, now I'm just messing around. Let me open up the lobby. playing with your food wicker and coming from the cat whoops hold on it's still set to four there we go let me put in the code it's not playing it's hunting oh yeah is it now one s w eight r Yeah. One swatter. Swater. One swater? One S-W-8-R. One swater. Whatever that means. Ooh, who's he playing today? Marth. John Femblem. Ooh! 
<laughs> it worked! Oops. Not what I wanted to do. Ah, I I be reversed spinning Kong there. I didn't want to use F smash there. I didn't want to use fair there. Gosh, that killed? Ugh. The number of times he's hit me and I couldn't grab him. All I needed to do was grab him. And then I kept doing the I kept doing a, a fair instead of a bear. He'd go in, hit me, and then drift to the left. And I know for a fact if I tried to catch that with a spinning Kong, it wouldn't work. I just needed to get one good hit on him, but I couldn't get it. Oh. He doesn't even play Marth! I haven't seen Danny's uh, inkling in a while. Well, inkling is a very is a pretty up close character, all things considered. Just because they have. Uh, splatter shot and ink bombs. Celeste, I think you put in the wrong song. Celeste, that's a let's play. <laughs> But you didn't put in the video you normally put in. You put in a different video. Eh. 
Anyways. Oh, okay. Never mind. Then I don't know. Ooh. Got him good. If only that would work when I try it. This is actually closer than I thought it was going to be. It seemed like it was much more of a blowout earlier on. Air dodge. I used to see Mega Man a lot more. Don't really catch him all too often. I mean, I used to see all the projectile characters way more. I used to see a lot more Toon Links and Young Links. I used to see a lot more me gunners, but as time went on, I saw less and less of them. At, at least from randos. I used to see the I used to see the Belmonts all the time. Maybe they're having a hard time hitting each other because they're relatively small. They're just taking a long time to kill, to be honest. This is more like the time that you expect to happen in Sonic matches. They just aren't touching each other. Ooh. That killed? I mean, I guess they were pretty high percentage. Let's run this back. Oh, okay. Sure. Oh my gosh. Cool, I'll take it.
Dang it. I thought I could catch him with the roll. Well, that went better than last time. I don't think I'm really practicing spacing well, though. When I actually get into the match, it's like all the things I... Did you see the matchup experience a second time? No, that's a different character. It's not the same. But it's like I'm not... It's like all the things I did in training mode or the things I told myself to practice don't actually happen when a real match happens. Especially any sort of combo I practice. It's like I can't even get into the position where I'm allowed to do it. That's a reversal. <laughs> How is that not killed? How is 130% right at the ledge not killed? There. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Huh. <sighs> Every match is a struggle. But really, 130% with a fresh fare, and it didn't kill. I'm upset. Is that wrong? Okay, I'm just lucky. Or it's good DI, probably. All right, well, you two can go. Oh, man. 
they keep reveal they keep posting new little teasers and images for the next episode of Digital Circus, and I cannot wait. Oh, I cannot wait. Whether the next episode will be the same kind of numbers? Oh, it, it definitely won't. That's just how these things are. Because all the people who watched it and thought it was just okay, or all the people who watched it and thought it was just okay or weren't interested in seeing more aren't going to stick around for the next one. Besides, it reached the, the first one reached their goal of one view, so it didn't matter. What the heck was that? What was that move that was that a counter? I don't know what this guy's plan is. I mean, if he comes across somebody who has projectiles, he's dead. This guy probably wouldn't make it against the Belmonts. The only thing we know, the thing we do know though about the second episode is that it's that Candy Kingdom they showed off in the teaser. In the hey Pomni, let's go on an adventure bit. The episode I'm waiting for is the fast food episode because I cannot wait to see Jax do drive through. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Turbo Ninja. Welcome, welcome. I'm Wickersham Leader, Toon VTuber. Ooh. Nice job, Danny. Oh, I've also been working on this Digital Circus art collab with a few people, and it's almost finished. I just need to edit the thing together, and, uh, I just need to edit the whole thing together, because all the parts are now compiled. Saucy, who are you playing today? Is it Wendy, or is it Sonic? Gosh. Wanted to get that ink, did ya? I knew you needed it. Oh.
There should be parody companies in Splatoon like Taco Bell. Well, there are companies, but they all make, like, clothing. Well, they do eat squid rings. I mean, who could forget... Who could forget uh, Marie's line from Splatoon 1 about eating squid wings? They're morbidly delicious, I think is what she said. Cannibalism is canon? Guess so. Mashing. Can't regular squid still exist in tandem with the ink kind? Yeah, but they don't. Not in Splatoon, anyway. Much in the way that the predecessor to humans doesn't exist anymore. If I could have actually mashed out, I would have probably been able to do something, but I hate mashing. I hate mashing. But monkeys do. Monkeys aren't the predecessors to humans. Neither are chimpanzees or gorillas. All of the direct human ancestors are dead. Besides, the squids uh, in Splatoon... Besides, the squids in Splatoon were, Splatoon were um, hyper-evolved artificially. They were given the... Essentially, there was this giant ship that was holding the remnants of humanity on this giant, like, underground uh, city that was holding the remnants of humanity. Um, they stored human memories inside of these... Things. I don't know what it is, whatever it was exactly, I forgot. But it had a liquid inside of it. And that liquid got inside of the sea life that was around it. Uh, and... Uh, and then they hyper-advanced the squids by essentially giving them human memories. And that's how they evolved into a human-like state in the span of only 10,000 years. Where we see a human? The the closest we've seen to a human is I think we see the hand. I think we see the outline and the hand of a researcher that put Judd into a cryo deep freeze. And there's a skeleton of a human that you see in Splatoon 1 that's holding a Wii U gamepad. There's also the bust of a human being that was at the end of the Octo expansion. Ooh, nice. How big is the skeleton relative to Inklings? Not certain. I mean, humans are larger than Inklings, but we don't know by how much. Because the skeleton isn't in, like, the game. It isn't in, like, a 3D space. It's in one of the sunken scrolls. Hmm. Did you guys ever watch, um... Did you guys ever watch this show called Inside Job? 
pretty good show. Got canceled way before they had the chance to make that to make that third season, I think. But um, <laughs> they had an episode. So the the show's all about these people who work for this like conspiracy theory company and like conspiracy theory stuff with the FBI or CIA or whatever. I forget which branch it is. But they had an episode where the lizard people <laughs> revealed that they rigged. That they got K. Rule in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Is that Mega Man? Yeah, it's Mega Man! <laughs> Mega High! <laughs> Apparently, the lizard people also were behind the Geico Gecko and the Shape of Water. My original OC gunman? No, Celeste, that's Mega Man.exe. I like her name better. He has one of those? <laughs> Celeste, have you not been paying attention to my Battle Network playthrough? I'm playing through Battle Network right now. <laughs> Anyways, in in battle so here here's the deal Celeste. Let me let me fill you in. Mega Man.exe is a program from a device called a pet. Essentially, these pet devices live inside of computers and they do battle and send messages for you. They're kind of like if Bonzi Buddy had a gun. And you carry them around with you in a personal device and you have like a device that you can jack. You have that personal device which you can use to jack in to other devices, send your guy in and, uh, have it do battle with viruses. Mega Man.exe belongs to the main character, Lan. Now... Now... This does not follow the same timeline as the other Mega Man games. In this one... This, so, it's funny, there are two Mega Man timelines. There's the original timeline, which follows Mega Man, Mega Man X, and Mega Man, uh, Legends. And then there's this timeline, which follows Battle Network and Star Force. And the only difference is whether or not Dr. Light has a wife and kids. <laughs> if Dr. Light gets married, he focuses in on doing computer stuff. If he doesn't, he makes robots. <laughs> I mean, I will say that the, the Mega Man Star Force world is a lot nicer to human beings because by legends all the human beings are dead. Funny coincidence, in the English dub of the anime, Iceman sounds a lot like Captain N Mega. Did I? We did watch that once. I don't remember what I. I don't think Iceman was in that episode. We watched the cat episode where they all got turned into cats.
I mean, we all know about the famous Mega Man, the, the famous Captain N Mega Man and why he is flipping green. <laughs> it's because they had a CRT with a bad color, with bad colors, so Mega Man appeared green. That's it. That's why he's green. <laughs> when everybody on the flippin' planet knows that he's blue. <laughs> <laughs> Even the bad cover artist knew he was blue. Exactly. I mean, on some level, this I think that ooh, on some level this definitely speaks to an understanding of how shows like this are made sometimes, where they're not given artwork like at all. The only thing they usually have is the actual back then, especially the only thing they had was the physical game to work with. You know, if it wasn't available for customers, they couldn't use it. They wouldn't give them internal anything. So, it left them up to interpretation a lot of the time. And I have a feeling like that's why Simon turned out the way he did, because they interpreted his outfit as some sort of, like, pilot gear. So he looked like he had goggles and, like, a vest with fur on it, which he doesn't really have. And he's got short blonde hair. I mean... <laughs> They also, the Mega Man characters also, all of them, looked terrible in that show. They all looked horrendous. <laughs> None of them looked right. They gave Dr. Light these weird elf ears. Same with Dr. Wily. M Roll didn't exist, instead they made up a new character called Mega Girl. Was that the show with Deadly Cuts Man? No, that's the Ruby Spears Mega Man cartoon, which actually was good. Well, it was better. I haven't actually watched much of it myself, but... He's blue in that show, and they had an episode where he did a crossover with X. The funny thing about that show, though, is that since they made Mega Man taller and more muscular to fit him more in line with, like, you know, American action shows, when they had X, they had to make him even taller and even more muscular. Oh no, I'm sorry. You're right. Deadly Cuts Man. That's, yes, that was Captain N. That was Deadly Cuts Man. The one I'm thinking of is Kung Fu Cut Man. That's a meme and that's not... Yeah, Cut Man, is, they're called properly names in, in the Ruby Spears show. Another interesting quirk of the show is that all the Robot Masters up until like Mega Man 4 got like Americanized redesigns of them. But by the end, they just started copying the original designs. Cutman is a meme character in NT Warrior 2. Poor Cutman. I think Cutman became a joke status partially because he's usually the first robot master everyone goes for in Mega Man 1. You'd think with Battle Network introducing way more, like, Robot Masters that don't actually exist, that didn't actually exist in the main Mega Man series. Oh my gosh, Danny, I'm so sorry. That was- oh, I'm sorry, that was horrible. You had that in the bag. Um, what was I saying? Oh, right. I'm pretty sure- uh, I, I think that with all the new Robot Masters they made in Mega Man Battle Network, they could have afforded to add a few women because they only have role, but they made up a bunch of characters that didn't I exist in the main Mega Man series at the time, like Numbers Man or Stone Man. Ready? I wonder, is Proto Man in Battle Network still a prototype of Mega Man? Hey, actually, I got a question. If Proto Man is a is a prototype Mega Man, how come he has a gun and a shield? Wasn't Mega Man designed as a cleaning robot who was then retrofitted for battle?
Did Wily give him the gun? He's an in-between Sniper Joe and Mega Man. Wait, did Light make Sniper Joe? Light was the primary robot maker. Well, they made the Robot Masters. But I don't know if he made all of the other robots. Protom is not a prototype for Mega, to my knowledge. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Surprised he still hit the floor. When Mega Man does a better job managing its timeline than Zelda does. Well, that's because Zelda didn't try. Light did make Sniper Joe. Oh, what did he make him for? Because <laughs> Light didn't want to make... Light was hesitant to make war robots. But he only, he only turned Mega Man into one after all the other robot masters got turned into one. Got turned into, you know, machines. Of war, excuse me, gosh. What is this match, by the way? Can somebody explain what's happening? Does Cool Squid find this fun? Probably. Reminds me of Monokuma was canonically made under the guise he would be a housemaid elderly assistance robot. Huh. I didn't know that Monokuma was a robot. Let's see, who is Mac playing? Proto Man came first and Sniper Joe is based on him. Oh, okay. How do you fight that as Ike? Well, uh, you could probably the key was to do a lot more grabbing, you know? How did anyone in the chain of command at Toa look at Monokuma and think, yeah, that's a sensible design for an LPD care robot? Did he have the smile from the beginning? Maybe they were Doraemon fans. <laughs> How does it feel to get a taste of your own medicine? So I was looking at some Cartoon Network bumpers earlier this morning, and I posted about some of them in my server today. And I love when they used to, so... Okay, so here's a bit of pretense for how some of this stuff works with fans. In... In channels' histories, right, they split up the history of a network by its bumper style. 
because usually a channel will have a consistent look that they use to show off the bumpers or the in-betweens like coming up next, right? Cartoon Network's bumpers are split up by the same way. And the first one, well, the first one that has original tunes on it was called the Powerhouse Era, which was when all of their bumpers featured the song Powerhouse. You've probably heard that song before. It's in Looney Tunes frequently. Um, and anyway, I was looking at some of the bumpers for Hanna-Barbera shows, and I'm like, man, if you, these bumpers look so much better than the shows they're based on, especially the one for Hanna-Barbera's Godzilla. <laughs> it looked really cool and like really well animated with the posing and the size of Godzilla and everything. But when you watch the show, you don't see any of that. Godzilla is seen almost entirely from wide angles from far away or up close angles where it's like the characters standing next to his nose or something. Not to mention every episode of that show is basically like the the human characters go to some place with Godzuki to research something. Then then they then another monster appears and then they call Godzilla to save the day in the last minute or so, right? Like the last couple minutes, Godzilla beats the monster and then he wanders off back into the ocean for next episode. <laughs> I mean, I love the implication of Godzuki as Godzilla's nephew because who is Godzilla's sibling <laughs> that had this kid? Godzuki, that's a name I haven't heard in 15 years. Oh, you're spelling it like that? Let me tell you, that's not how it's spelled. It's G-O-D-Z-O-O-K-Y. It's very American. Nice. Wow, I should have just shielded. I was trying to air I was trying to sidestep. Of course. Yes, I have seen that one. That one mod for DK. I'm so mad at that one.
Oh my gosh, my roll didn't work. I rolled away from that like seven times. How did it not work that time? I should have just rolled earlier. Skintilla. Braxton, your internet man. I keep going to Nook Islands, but I can't find a cranky villager. Like, I'm the cranky villager. <laughs> Why do you want a cranky villager so bad? Do you need an old coot? Having one of each gets you reactions and stuff. Oh, that's true. Apollo would be a good fit. Is Apollo cranky? I didn't know that. Does a... But what, what personality does Sasha have? I thought, well, don't also the the ones who talk about weightlifting, I forget what their name is, but don't they also have di the deep voices? Tasha the skunk, who's Sasha? Sasha is this, this, um, this green rabbit that everybody thought was a girl when he was first revealed. He's wearing a varsity shirt. Scoot doesn't. Mm. Isn't it kind of crazy that it took all the way to um, New Her the? Was it New Horizons? Yeah, New Horizons for your villager to be able to have different skin tones. Every feature in Animal Crossing came two games later than it should have. Most people just don't know how it works in New Leaf. Oh, is it one of those things in New Leaf where you go to like a tanning salon and then you can pick, like you you can you can ask how long you want to be in there and it's not clear which each one will do for you until you get out there like hair. You have to go to Tortimer's Island and not wear a hat and stand outside for certain amounts of time. I knew it was something stupid like that. <laughs> Look, I understand. It's a life sim. Things in life change slowly or not at all sometimes. But like, come on. I should be able to pick what I want my hair to look like and what my skin tone is. <laughs> Yahoo! 
And I bet you have to keep going back to Tortimer Island to reapply the tan. Okay, well, Braxton, you need to figure out what's going on with your internet, buddy. I don't recall if your tan fades, actually. That'd be amusing if you come back from not playing and all of a sudden your skin is different. <clears throat> Look, they were fighting and training with the hold L for frame by frame. <laughs> Somebody had a macro for L. You know what I'd love to see? A Smash tournament where every kind of controller modification is completely legal. Don't forget about your float, Celeste. Let's analyze this neutral interaction. Let me hold L real quick so I can get the scoop on my opponent. <laughs> I meant more stuff like, uh... When, um... Oh my gosh. When... When you can use a turbo feature to jab perfectly in in uh, melee or so you can do a uh, so you can do a gentleman with falcon because they do allow some most tournaments do allow some modifications uh, uh one modification that's extremely common is um the uh, grooves put into the analog stick so that you can have the perfectly correct angle for Firefox. Well, you got a lot farther than you were expecting, Celeste. Oh, 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 have you guys heard about the last couple of people who are sticking around on Nintendo Network on the 3DS and Wii U? There's a countdown. Twink versus Bear. That's not Banjo. Like, so they're not kicking people off. 
they're not kicking people off of the network in s for certain instances. And everybody's basically just staying online as long as they can until they either, you know, like, I guess, get bored and disconnect. Or they're forced off. And, um, <laughs> like, right now there are currently six known people who are still online in those games. And the games are XY, Mario Kart 8, Mario Kart 7, Mario Maker, and Splatoon. How does Mario Maker even function with no online? Uh... Well, Mario Maker doesn't function. You can make levels. And that's it. Mario Maker 1 didn't even have local multiplayer, did it? Nope, you can only play as Mario. That's poor oversight. Well, that's just how these games are made to work. Heck, they sold Mario Maker uh, 3DS without the ability to... Without really the ability to uh, play in levels online. You can only just download them. But the last two people, as far as I know, the last two people who are on Mario Kart 7 are just, are just racing each other forever. Just, as, well, not forever, just as long as they can get away with. Alright, this match is weird. Ugh, sorry, stretching. It's just this match is weird. This is a strange match where they're both kind of just killing themselves. Man. Alright, I need some tips. People who are watching my matches, I need I need some advice. How to ca how can I win? What do I need to do to win? I need, like, a list. Stop caring. That won't make me win. That'll do the opposite. That, that'll keep me where I am. Zalrog, you're playing a dangerous game, my friend. Okay, but now can he do it again? Free yourself from the salt. I'm not gonna get better if I just stop caring. Well, you know what? I can appreciate that you made it to the third stock. You were playing at a really bad disadvantage. Hit sleep mode wins every time. Activate the lag switch. Use the disintegration ray.
the buffer SD. I know, I know. But you know what I'm happy about? No one's no one's dominating. People are losing and getting in at a decent rate, which is great. The song is fire, what is it? It's Never Turn Back from Shadow the Hedgehog. Can it be in the Sonic movie, please? No. I doubt it, they didn't use much of the game's OST. Well, according, I heard today that one of the reasons they couldn't use some of the... They wanted to use Sonic 1's music, especially Green Hill Zone, in the actual movie. But, uh... Since Nakamura owns the songs, they, uh, they can't. <laughs> they couldn't get the licensing for it. Well, of course they wanted to use Green Hill Zone. It's one of the most recognizable Sonic songs, period. Like, come on, are you gonna be like, oh my gosh, can't believe they used the Super Mario Brothers theme in the Mario movie. And then there's Kirby fans like, haha, I love fighting Wispy Woods again. <laughs> Sonic Team is quite obsessed with Green Hill to a comical degree. The first Mario level isn't in every Mario game. No, but the song appears in, like, tons of them. The, 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 the Mario... One ground theme is in Mario 1, it's in Mario 2, it's in Mario 3, it's in Mario World, it's in Sun- it's in 64, it's in Sunshine, it's in Galaxy, it's in Galaxy 2! <laughs> it's in 3D Land, it's in Odyssey, it's been in every Mario game! I don't think the problem is that they're revisiting Green Hill Zone. It's that they revisit Green Hill Zone and then call attention to it. You know, I mean, they qu they've they actually done level quoting, is what I'm calling it, of the Mario of Mario 1, 1, quite often. Alright, let's do this again. Round two. Kinda wanted to fight that me sword fighter. Wait, this is round three. Might get a live and learn. Didn't they use the opening riff for live and learn in one of the, in one of the um, trailers or teasers or something? Oh, 
my gosh, I wanted to use... I wanted to use my punch. I get hit by that while I was dashing into her from behind or him I guess it's not the female inkling this time One was only to play one post-2006 Sonic game, what would you recommend? Generations. Or Mania. Oh my gosh, you fell right into my arms! Where's my super armor, dang it? Where is my super armor? You fell right into my arms. I used my giant punch and you just, oh my gosh. I got cheated like five times at the end there. I, I used giant punch like three times and the super armor didn't activate. <sighs> fell right into my arms and missed the smash attack. Oh my gosh. I don't want to play this game where I just run away and have to play super, super passively against Inkling. I want to be able to run in and kill. I don't want to have to just sit around and wait. When do I get to be aggressive like those other DKs? When is it my turn? I've seen so many compilations of people just falling into DK's combos. I always like this DDD one with the checkerboard pattern. It's like the Cartoon Network logo is on his stomach. Well, the old one, they don't really use that anymore. In fact, I'm pretty sure the new building only has a C and an N on it. It doesn't even have the old Cartoon Network Studios thing. What does the new building look like? He has decent ults, not they actually change patterns on it. Yeah, it makes them all stand out. Hmm. 
I can't... Is that the new building? Okay, so they got the new the new style logo on it. I think. We need Sonic who's plaid like that dude in SpongeBob. Oh man. Even if it was a blue plaid, that would still be better. Hey, props for the props for Pac props for Sonic at least allowing them to be a different shade of blue compared to Pac-Man who has to be yellow. They won't let him be any other color than yellow. And I don't know why. I don't know why they won't do that. What's wrong with making him blue or purple or something else so he's easier to see at a glance? <gasps> okay, I just checked Twitter. New, new teaser for Digital Circus and it comes out on May 3rd. That's in... That's... Oh my gosh. That... That's in... Oh my gosh, that's in two weeks! Oh... Oh... oh. Two weeks? Two weeks? <laughs> Two weeks? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, and this new gameplay. Gameplay, excuse me. The new footage they showed off looks great. Jacks with an ice cream waffle cone gun. <laughs> what the? Oh my gosh, it's Mad Max? Oh my gosh, May 3rd. All right, Braxton, look, dude, you've got to get your internet thing sorted out, man. You can't, these, this connection is legitimately bad. I'm sorry. You're normally fine. Well, you used to be fine up until like two weeks ago, but like, oh man, you need to, I'm sorry, Braxton, you have to go. We can't play with this kind of connection. We gave you a pass for the first time, but we're, I'm going to have to ask you to get out of here. You mean it's cinematic frame rate? Don't talk to me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited for the next episode. I'm just watching this trailer over and over. Oh, you know what? Here, 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 here. I'm just gonna... You have to wait two whole weeks. I know, I have to wait two whole weeks. But instead of watching this match... Instead of watching this match, I'm gonna play the teaser for you guys, because you need to... Oh my gosh, you need to see this. Where, where is it? Uh... this oh hold on it's muted hang on sorry sorry unmute site of the amazing on the next all new episode of the amazing digital circus the funny circus gang takes a trip to the deliciously delectable candy canyon kingdom <laughs> sounds like a real oh. radiant riot right bubble huh? where am i what's wrong bubble why are you acting like you don't know who I am? Well, I'm... I asked where I was, not who you are. Also, I'm not Bubble. What's happening? It's called improv, Omni! The first rule of improv is to never pretend you're not Bubble! What does this have to do with the Candy Canyon Kingdom? And scene! It's gonna be a sickly sweet old time! I'll see you there! 
I still don't really know anything about this episode, and I've been teleported to a meat freezer. Cool. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't wait for the next episode, guys. It's in two weeks. Uh... Oh my god. It's in two weeks. Oh, man. Uh, I have to kick Braxton. It's in two weeks. <laughs> I have to kick Braxton. It's in two weeks. <laughs> oh, Pomni sounds, dare I say, stable. Oh, well, she... They said that she... Well, she... It does, you know, it makes sense that she's not gonna... That she's not gonna be like that every episode. It doesn't make sense for her to be like that every episode, you know? Like, uh, um... You know, because now she's used to living here, more or less, right? Sorry, Danny. I just had to do my fair dues. Dude, if Pomni was in multiverses, if Jax was in multiverses, I'd main him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's in two weeks. Oh. <laughs> I, I can't control myself. You know what I need to do? I need to download a Pomni me. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, I should do another playthrough of Miitopia. I haven't, because when I did Miitopia last time, when I did Miitopia last time, I, uh, um, it was before I re-debuted. And instead of using my own characters, I could use all whatever, I feel like. I wonder if somebody has made the Digital Circus Gang in Metopia. Metopia Jax. There's a few. How long does that take? I remember it felt like forever, but it ended up being like 35 hours. It's probably because the gameplay of Metopia is quite repetitive, but the cool thing is being able to to see your characters that or the, the characters you chose doing all the wacky stuff together. Oh man. I can't wait for multiverses to come back and I can't wait for Daffy Duck to be playable. I never learned how to play Marvin. I also never unlocked him. If you did a replay of it, you could do a build-up event where you vote on all the characters. Ooh, that would be fun. My favorite me is the Metopia Switch avatar that Bowser summoned it somehow. Made to have really good mouth movements when he talks. Oh, okay. So here's how that one works. When, um, when your me you opens their mouth, any attachments you have to their mouth disappears. So what they did is they made it so that the closed mouth, so that the open mouth, yeah, the closed mouth is his mouth open. And they made it so that they hid underneath his closed mouth. So whenever he talks, it looks like his m mouth is moving properly. And they hid the and he hid the mouth somewhere where you couldn't see it. That sounds almost on par with the Soul Caliber Magic Card. I don't. I, what's the infamous Soul Calibur Magikarp? Soul Calibur Magikarp.
Oh, the guy bends over backwards and he looks like a magic carp. That's pretty funny. That's pretty good. Wait. What is this from? Dungeon Fighter. Dungeon and Fighter. Oh, huh, never heard of that. Dungeon Fighter Online. Oh man, so... Digital Circus, Multiverses, Paper Mario Remake, My Birthday, all happening in May this year. Guys, May is gonna be busy. Uh, oh, right. Also, I guess another news. Um, the Donkey Kong expansion for Super Nintendo Land has been delayed to later this year. Sounds like it may be hectic. Oh, maybe, but it'll be fun. Oh, I can't wait for the next episode of Digital Suit. Yo, it's Goku. <laughs> He's even wearing the orange. So, funny thing, I... I think I looped already, so you go into the back. Yes, of course. Thank you, Danny, for keeping track, because I did not. I am too distracted right now. But who am I going to see it with for this new episode with first? My... Ugh. Okay, so I showed the show to my mom, and she said she wants to actually watch the rest of it. I also showed it to my dad, but he has no interest because he thinks the whole thing is creepy. Right? So do I show it to them first? Do I show it to my mom first and watch it with her? Do I watch it on my own? Do I watch it with my VR chat friends who are all digital circus nerds? Or do I watch it with my... My, you know, you guys on stream. <laughs> you know what? I shouldn't watch it on stream. Everyone all at once. Guys introducing new co-host, my mom. <laughs> Watch it with family. You know who else streams? <laughs> My mom. You know what? I'll watch it with my I'll watch it with my VR chat friends first. And then I'll watch it with my mom. And then I'll see who else wants, because I'm gonna be watching this like seven times. Oh gosh, my arms. I'm stimming. I am stimming like crazy. Uh, how familiar are you with Yu Yu Hakusho? Not at all. Guys, I'm hugging my Pomni plush right now. <laughs> I'm a post in memes anyway. Oh, all right, sure. Do a watch party in the server. Oh my gosh, you're right!
They cooked all your Cinnabons together in one big gooey cinnamon mass. That sounds good. Okay. I air dodged and lost my second jump somehow. I air dodged. I, I baited that. I was gonna air dodge into the ground. Okay. I definitely air dodged, but DK didn't do it. I could have baited a. Oh my gosh, I should have baited a. 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 a, a berry instead. I did the tech check, but it just, I just didn't work. Fraxa got back in. Well, we'll see if his connection's better. If it's not, I might have to kick him again, because Braxton, your internet is too bad. When my internet's too bad, I have to... I... I have to stop. I have Earthlink 2132 Wi-Fi. Play some hi-fi rush. I never got around to playing that one. Remember when I played Balan Wonderworld, man, and it just suddenly combusted like twice and I was too stubborn to stop. <laughs> How is the music in, in um, Hi-Fi Rush? Wait, is Hi-Fi Rush the game made by Microsoft that showed up out of nowhere and was a smash hit? Or is that the, the, the Jet Set Radio game? High point. Yes? Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Oh, okay. It's the Microsoft game. All right. Stream delay. You know how it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not that bad, but I do, I do go on low latency mode. But there is a little bit of extra latency because it's going through restream. Streamer to stop the copyrighted music. Some of the songs I say are, I dare say, better anyway. Wait, it has copyrighted music? I didn't know that. Well, I mean, all the music is copyrighted, but it doesn't have, like, has licensed music? I had no idea.
Nine Inch Nails and Black Keys. Huh. Nails and Keys. <laughs> Metal bands. How different are the songs in streamer mode? Oh, good question. They have to keep the same BPM because that's how the game and fights work. Oh yeah. Sucker Punch game? Sly Cooper? I don't know what Sucker Punch game you're referring to. Infamous, maybe? I don't know any Sucker Punch games after that. Oh, Sunset Overdrive. is nice and the fact that it's performed live is very interesting. What was Sunset Overdrive even about? Oh, I have no idea. I just remember that it was a it was an Xbox 3 it was an Xbox 1 launch title and like nobody ever talked about it. I never heard it come up like anywhere. Although to be fair, when it comes to Xbox exclusives in general, I barely hear anything about any of them. Like, I heard about the Halo games, but I didn't hear about Sunset Overdrive. I hear about Rare Replay, but that's not new games. A girl band the Dungeon Fighter Company is trying to make and promote. Huh. I feel like I had major aesthetic to it, but I don't remember why. Yeah.
Tony Hawk, Ratchet and Clank, and Jet Set comparisons. Well, if you make any 3D game where your main character is on skates, it's gonna get Jet Set radio comparisons. Wow, I haven't heard this song in a long time. What if they made a fighting- uh, you know what, that that thing about Pomni and Multiverses, Zelrog, has got me thinking. What if there was a fighting game that featured indie animation characters? So we got, like... We got a, um... Monkey Wrench, and Hell of a Boss, and Digital Circus. Uh, Murder Drones, right? Ed's World. Uh... Oh, what else? Taco Man? <laughs> Pico? Well, no, Pico was in a game, wasn't he? Not in a cartoon. Happy Tree- was Happy Tree Friends indie? That's indie, right? You can put them in there. Uh, Ramshackle? Sorry, the more I think about the next episode of Digital Circus, the more I stim, I can't control my arm. I'm so dead. <laughs> oh wait, no, he has to go through Whipper. Oh, Whipper, whatever. But Saucy! He has to beat Saucy! Long go, Gold Clipside Obituary. That's right! The Power Devs were hiding a comic artist recently. Wonder how that panned out. Pal World kind of, uh... I mean, the initial hype blew over, right? And I'm not really hearing people say much about it anymore because there just isn't much. what we had we beat devs themselves says that's okay and that's how games should be yeah no but i'm not i'm just saying it's like people hyped it up as something really massive and then it just kind of never went anywhere granted i'm not playing it so i don't hear news about it right like it, obviously obviously you're not going to hear about every single game in the cultural zeitgeist all the time i never played pal world but it was considering all the debates and all the discussions that it was a part of to see it just kind of I don't know, just go the direction of most games is pretty funny. I can play more when the game's finished. That's how I feel about Deltarune. I'm gonna play Deltarune when the game's done, but that's gonna be in like eight years. <laughs>
Ooh, like the Kartani, um, what you call it. Hello. Uh, what do you mean, Shiny Hunter? Pokemon Phantom really overreacted. I don't remember getting near that angle over Temtem. Because nobody cared about Temtem. That was the thing. It's like it wasn't it wasn't nearly as big. Yeah, Temtem didn't blow up. It didn't have big message around it. I mean, I remember when Pal World first got announced, everybody just kind of dismissed it. They were just like, oh my gosh, this Chinese Pokemon bootleg. But they were like, oh my gosh, it has guns, that's funny. I mean, nobody even talks about Cassette Beasts. I never found out about Cassette Beasts until people were talking about... Until people were talking about this. A few mod knockouts with good reputations. Never heard of cassette beasts. Hmm. You know what's a movie I've been wanting to see, but I haven't been able to locate anywhere? I don't know if any of you have heard of this, but it might be one of the most interesting... It's not lost. It's just, I don't know where you can find it. It's called May and the Kitten Bus. It's this semi-sequel to My Neighbor Totoro about the younger sister, May, and interacting with a tiny cat bus called the Kitten Bus. As far, as far as I know, you can't buy it anywhere. I have no idea where you can find it. The only thing I've been able to find about this was an off-screen recording of an audience watching it. You're still you're barking. You're barking over there. Well, it's my turn to get my everything kicked in.
What's the time when everyone gets this visually angry about Cat Mario? Well, it needs to be pitched. In order for this to like work with anything else, the thing needs to be pitched as a killer of whatever your whatever it's being compared to. I tried. Pokemon needs someone to challenge their monopoly. Okay. In order for it to in order for something to really challenge mono to challenge Pokemon, you're not going to do it with gameplay. And I mean that, it's not going to be with gameplay, because Pokemon is not just a game. It's cute monsters, it's an anime series, it's, it's stuck in the cultural zeitgeist, right? But Game Freak as game does be motivated to put in effort. They are motivated to put in effort. It's never not been about effort. It's always been about crunch. Well, you know what though? This might be a big change considering that after that Pokemon ZA doesn't come out for like another year. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fair and that's what we're all that's what everybody's kind of been saying. The Pokemon company, the Pokemon company, not Game Freak. Atlas is like the complete opposite in that regard, though. They love they refuse to move forward with Persona, and it drives everyone nuts. Well, the games keep coming out good, so as far as I'm concerned, that's fine. I mean, I love to. I I always like bringing up the old Miyamoto quote: "A bad game uh, of uh, excuse me, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is bad forever." However, that's not a hard fast rule. It just means let people take their time when they can ensure that the product is good because we don't want a we don't want a yandere dev situation on our hands, nor do we want a nor do we want a Duke Nukem Forever situation on our hands.
Atlas keeps spitting out all these Persona 5 spin-offs. Oh, is that... Uh... I mean, Persona 5 was kind of an unprecedented success for the series, wasn't it? Like, Persona 5 reached heights that no other Persona game had since. Especially with all those people being introduced to it through Smash. I don't feel like they refuse to let go of their glory. Is it working? I think even Persona 5 fans are getting tired of it. Well, guess we'll see what happens, but I think we all know that Persona 6 will not hit those same highs. Whatever Persona 6 is. Five are all primary colors. Red, blue, and yellow. Uh, what about green? I guess the green's the next good one. Green seems to be my go-to, honestly. I wonder if the next thing will have one of the party members be a VTuber. Don't see why not! That is the most depressed Mario. It's Morio! Don't you know about Morio? My face when I have access I have access the metaverse through my gaming setup. I mean, that's what it is, isn't it? Hey gamers, today we'll be streaming the Metaverse. The Metaverse is like we're treating like some novel new thing, uh, something that's been done for 20 years. Yeah, I mean, you know what it is? It's Second Life. That's what it is. And most of the people who are in the Metaverse are like crypto dudes. <laughs> he talks about it as we believe he really is a robot or something. Have you seen a picture of Zuckerberg recently? He grew out his hair. He's got like a he's got like ginger curls now. He he doesn't look like a robot anymore. He looks like a person. A metaverse can be just defined as an MMO or a club penguin or VR chat or something. Yeah.
So guys, don't be fooled. Dude, they've upgraded the Zuck. Favorite AC villager? Okay, I have two answers for this, and it kind of depends on what you're saying, what you mean. I like, um, oh, I've forgotten his name. The, the gorilla. He's on my island. What's his name? I haven't booted up Animal Crossing in a long time. I forgot. Louis. Yes, I like Louis. Louis's one of my faves. Especially when he was, like, super into Nintendo stuff and New Leaf. My second... Th then my other answer... My other answer is Anka. <laughs> but it, it's got nothing to do with how Anka is in-game. So, you know, take... Mean that what you will. <laughs> Anka is a very dang and Ronfa answer. I, I, what does that mean? Look, the thing I kind of love about villagers like Anka is that the fan base gave them a personality that they don't have in the game. There are very few villagers that are like that. Like, everyone makes Bob out to be a pothead. is another series I desperately want to see effort put into. Well, I don't know if AC is a series... I think that what they went for in New Horizons might have been a little bit too much in the you-can-control-the-island. See, I th what a lot of people... What a lot of people wanted in a lot of ways was to be able to just control where the new villager moves in so that they don't have to, you know, so that they don't have to worry about um, them going over their pathways that they already created. Where it kind of ended up going towards was a total, like, item customization, uh, island customization thing that feels less like a life sim and more like a city builder. Wait, Whipper Rage quit? How did I miss that? I was too busy talking about Anka. Wicker Rage quit and was very confused. <laughs> Being able to customize your island goes hand in hand with collecting stuff. Yeah, but it reached, it changed a lot of our frames of reference for how we viewed our island. It wasn't a growing community. It wasn't like how in the earlier Animal Crossings where it was a growing community where everybody has their own lives and stuff. It was a like perfect utopia where you 
could custom when you can control literally everything that goes on, right? Compared to like New Horizon, New Leaf, or City Folk, where you literally couldn't control a lot of what your villagers did. And City Folk had that whole city thing. They didn't do anything, they'd never done anything. I think it's about time that we got an Animal Crossing where every villager had unique dialogue. Reduce the number of villagers, I don't care, but... There were 200 villagers in nearly every game. The lazy villagers are bug obsessed. Let us sell them bugs or something. It's so easy. Hmm. Horizons only added 16 to the previous total. And that is that including all the DLC villagers? Oh, that's true. We did lose some. I'm sure you're upset that Ganon didn't come back. Wouldn't that be nice? I would have totally added Ganon. <laughs> Were Link and Zelda also villagers? Wolf Link and Epona talking was super weird though. Hmm. Plus an inkling themed guy. Oh, there was the there's the Callie and Marie ones. Yeah, Callie and Marie had villagers, they were squirrels. Hold on, Amiibo Villagers, Animal Crossing. Let me take a look. Oh gosh, I forgot about all the cards they made.
That's true, there were the Sanrio villagers, but they came back. I actually have those cards. Okay, here they are. Epona, Medley, Wolf Link, Apalico, um, the Ghost, Ganon, and Octorok. Oh, the Inkling one. That's right, yeah, the Octopus Inkling, and Callie and Marie Squirrels. You bought one set for you, one of your friends at Target. You got a 5 a.m. for that? Oh, gosh. I just went to Target and got him. I, I didn't have to get up or anything. There was no rush or nothing. It's all good. I won't stop barking right next to my door. Sanrio fan just seem like fans, not the actual characters. Uh, yeah, they are just fans, they're not the actual characters. My local target refused to sell them on the shelves you had to order online. I I can understand that. I mean, do you guys remember the debacle that Target went through when um when they had the whole Pokemon card fiasco going on? It was bad. They they, they would straight up have people line up like day of buy everything and then leave. And they would have nothing like 30 minutes into the day. People were running over each other, trying to kill each other. They, were, they had a limit of certain people per customers, certain amount per customer after a while. Then they just stopped sell then they just stopped carrying them entirely. It wasn't worth it. It was generating bad press. They didn't care about the people who got hurt, really. This is generating bad press. It really generates bad press playing DK. What are you talking about? Everyone knows that DK players are the, are the nicest, most kindest people. They absolutely don't get upset when due to their character choices, they are automatically in a disadvantage in any scenario. I didn't grab the ledge. All right. Why do I even try? I'm not gonna win. The sword's weakness is that he's bad at landing. He can be. He's super floaty and easy to juggle. It's just I can't do anything that like makes him have to commit.
Why? Why can't I punish him for trying to combo me? That happens so often. I just try to grab him after he does his 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 air jabs. Heavy trying to punish a lightweight. Huh? I'm just trying to punish somebody for hitting my shield. I should be able to do that. He gets away with it so often. Like every single match I play against him. With every single match I play against him, I, I, I can never grab him after he hits me with jab. And I always get hit by the follow-up. And it's like, what am I supposed to do? Well, how do I punish this? Not to mention the absolute nonsense that was, I got the triple whatever... Reversal, and I can't... The, I got the triple bear thing, but it didn't matter, so it doesn't even count because I didn't even get a kill off of it. He gets to recover because Sora... And then he even turned it into a reversal situation because I wanted to, like an idiot, actually confirm a KO. Yeah, I know. Your release window for multiverse is yet May. May 28th, the day before my birthday. song sounds familiar it's from rhythm thief maybe we get four people together for a stream Ooh, that would be fun one of the songs from this game became a meme recently Here, I'm sure you've heard this meme like a couple of years ago. This song was a meme. Yeah, that's from Rhythm Thief. Yeah, that was the first song in the game. Because apparently every single guard in every single guard in the in the museum was on the left side of the statues. Very convenient. <laughs> None of them went to the right side.
What if you could do a Final Smash, but instead of just pressing the B button, you had to do a pretzel input? Excuse me. That only happened if Geese Howard got in. Do you think they would add Geese? I mean, after Terry, that's the next, that's the next King of Fighters character, right? You gotta add Geese. Gosh, I gotta put on soy sauce for Geese. Hold on. I remember when people unironically wanted the Untitled Goose. I want the Untitled Goose, that would be funny. Alright, Braxton. We're gonna see how this match goes, and, if, and this is your last chance, dude. If the lag's too bad, I, we can't, we can't do it. All right, never mind. What the epic triumphant style of the Sora trailer, but it's the goose. How do I actually- how do I prevent Inkling from recovering? See? What the heck? I'm 
I'm not gonna win, am I? Oh, uh, gosh, what to do? What to do? Do you know Meta Pikmin? Art sauce for geese. Three, two, one, go. Oh. I thought they were like a good player and you knew them or something. One of the corrupted programs is a Pulp Fiction reference. I don't know if you thought, caught that one. No, I, I guess I did. I missed that one, but I caught the All Your Base one. When did the first Mega Man Battle Network come out? Mega Man Battle Network. Two thousand one. Wow, was was All Your Base older than that? Mega Man Battle Network, all your base. Okay, it said the one that I didn't fight says, I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger. Wow, how old is all your base? All your base. It's on Wikipedia. When did it become a meme? Know your meme says as early as 1998. Wow, but that could be potentially one of the earliest internet memes ever. It was still kicking around in 2007!
Ooh, this song. I love this song. is playing with his food. I mean, he wants to... Uh, I don't know. I feel like Ganon can't afford to. I wasn't sandbagging. I didn't think you were sandbagging. obvious you had full control of the game. Well, he likes to play that way against Celeste, but that's because it's Celeste. Wish I could get full control of the game. Even in matches I'm winning, I still go like, it'll. I'll still have one stock left as opposed to being a total blowout. I can't tell you how many times I've been reverse three stocked. Mostly because I don't know. I just want to win. Is that so bad? Is that illegal? Here we go. I'm paint. Your paint? Oh, good.
Wow, Zelrog, you're you're holding yourself pretty well here. Congratulations! It's a tough matchup, honestly. I mean, Sora's just a tough character anyway. Yeah, Braxton... I'm gonna have to call it off. I can't pause the game. There we go. Braxton, you need to get your internet in check, my friend. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to... Otherwise, it's just not gonna happen. I'm sorry. It, that's, that's like an unacceptable level of lag. To see one of those matches played back at 10 times speed. That would be great if it was consistent in how slow it was, but it's not. Because it's lag, it's consistent. I'll take it. patience that match. Was it? Oh. Well, thank you.
starting to see why other doors hate the DQMU. It's really hard to get through bear when done well. Huh. DQ? Dairy Queen? No, DK. Now, what will she do with Pichu? We're still going? Yeah, what do you mean we're still going? It's not time to it's not time to stop yet. Cool. <laughs> sure. That was sad. I I don't know what. I, I mean, I thought you didn't matter. thought Smash was only three hours, my mistake. Oh, no, no, no. It goes three and a half. One half hour for practice, and then three for the actual battles. in the face. Wow, that went way better than my other matches. Gravity Mush Musio heard W. Yeah, I do like some of Gravity Rush's music. I never played the game. The real tragedy will never see Braxton versus Cool Squid at full FPS.
Yeah, Cool Squid was here earlier. How do you fix your internet? That's not something we can answer for you. Could be that your internet's just having a bad day, and it'll be fixed later. That happens all the time. How do I punish Sora for trying this? No counters, all the... Ugh. Gosh. I hate having to use Spinning Kong, but nothing else was breaking in. I tried being patient, he got in my face, I tried... Rushing him down, he had defense. I can't stay away because he's got projectiles with his magic. What do I do? Oh yeah, Sora's definitely. The way he talks about Riku sounds like it was his long-lost lover. I don't know what to do. I, I can't- I can't get in. I can't cause Sora to be afraid and have to actually, like, you know, put themselves in a bad position to get away from me. I can't- I can't make Sora do something that causes him to die, you know? Like... I, he gets me all the time. I'm forced to play like a million miles away. You find a worse Sora to practice against. Go to Sora Cord, maybe. But I've fought Kongus the whole time. If there's any Sora that I should be able to fight, it's him. Sora and don't know it. We could spar. I don't know. Mm. I guess so. I mean, I have been doing more of these, um, like, more middle of the week. Well, I guess the opposite end of Friday would be Monday, huh? So if I started doing practice sessions on Monday, because that's the farthest day away from Friday. Watch as a Keyblade, too.
can watch Keyblade is slightly more range. Oh gosh. Keyblade wielders I should know about. Game and watch noises. That's basically me every single game after Kingdom Hearts 1, because I still because like I still wonder what the context of them calling Sora the Keyblade Master really is. But I guess Birth by Sleep made it a little better. Where they like is said that actually all the other Keyblade wielders in the world are like dead, except for Mickey. So calling him the Keyblade Master isn't really that crazy, but like Come on. That's so that's a crazy stretch you're doing there, my friend. Smash 6 will be our game. I suspect that I will suck just as much as that game. Honestly, it's fitting. time to know the matchup. I suppose that's true, but I've been playing against this matchup for three years. <laughs> it's got to balance out somewhere, right? Those giant sweeping aerials, though, are terrible. I mean, I, those things are the kind of things you see in your nightmares. No one really knows what to do against Sora, but at least people know a little bit more than well, get, what to do against Sora than what to do against, um... Uh, then what to do against Steve?
max arena population? Oh. Waiting next game? What's... What's waiting next game? Okay, why does that up air work? Sora not being in the next Smash? That's- Sora not being in the game isn't gonna help. It's- it doesn't fix my skill issues. Mexican Pikachu, what's the problem? You gotta love how somehow the character who exists in only two dimensions weighs more than a balloon. I mean, could you imagine an infinitely thin, an infinitely thin person who can walk through you and slice you in half? That up air is the second best. In I mean, it's got a wind box, it's got. It does good damage, it combos into itself. Certain little lizard yellow stick wielder. Is K rules up here that good? Doesn't actually have a wind box. Oh. K rule doesn't have a yellow stick. Oh, I thought you were talking about the GameCube controller. Dang it, I didn't have that ready.
Every once in a while, I do the other thing where I just throw them into the back. Because sometimes they're not ready for it. You jump, though? No, you mean you, you managed to jump? After you got- after you got thrown towards the edge? I mean, you had momentum. It doesn't cancel all your momentum. Alright, last match. Gonna see if I can pull this one off. Corn from Flame Symbol Destiny. Oh. I don't know that. Oh, corn. Corin. Oh, I see. I got lucky there. Wow, that worked? Well, I tried. Oh. What? How did he get out of that one? Oh. Oh, I'm gonna lose, aren't I? Dang it! I had hope! I had hope! There was potential for me to win- You know what? I'm not even gonna bother. There was potential, but it was not meant to be. Well, that was a disappointing ending. For once, I had the opportunity to actually win, but then he actually started trying. <sighs> well... Thank you all for coming for today. We had some good matches, we had some bad matches, and we got a new reveal for a new episode of my favorite show right now. And I hope I'll be able to see you guys later. Tomorrow, uh, we've got not only the cartoon watch parties, but we've also got the art streams, which you all voted for your favorite genius tunes. And it looks like the winners were Sandy Cheeks and Dr. Ivo Robotnik. Um, yeah, he got a 60 over 60%. 
and then on Monday, we'll be finishing Mega Man Battle Network. So I hope you're uh, interested in seeing how that game concludes. That'll be all for me for today. Thank you all for watching. I'll be seeing you guys later. Have yourselves a very good afternoon and a very good night. And that is all, folks.